This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. The waters off a tiny Caribbean island called Bimini cover a long stone structure that scientists have yet to explain. The stones appear to be so carefully placed, some people have concluded they are either a road or a wall, perhaps even a remnant of Atlantis. A nearby healing well is supposedly linked to the mystical springs of that lost civilization. While diving near Bimini, a San Diego physician claims discovery of a submerged pyramid inside which he found a crystal ball. He says this crystal emits a power capable of repelling metal. Is it possible that the Bimini wall, the well, and the crystal ball share a common past with the legendary continent of Atlantis? The twin islands of Bimini, 60 miles east of Florida, are a tropical paradise, home for 2,000 people. The atmosphere is relaxed and happy. It seems difficult to imagine that these easygoing people could be the descendants of Atlanteans who purportedly had the power to rule the world. There is, however, evidence that alludes to that fact. Beyond the fashionable yachting docks in the dense undergrowth of the North Island is the figure of a fish etched in sand. Native lore gives no clue to what it represents, but it does lie close to a mysterious series of huge square rocks submerged in 15 feet of water off the coast. The blocks are so perfectly fitted together that some people have likened them to a Roman highway. No clues exist to the origin of the blocks. There are claims that they are ordinary beach rock which broke off from the Bimini coastline thousands of years ago. Such formations are common in tropical waters throughout the world. One of those who believes the wall is beach rock is Eugene Shin, a U.S. Geological Survey team member who conducted an analysis of the Bimini wall. We did uh, two types of things. First, we cored the blocks, and we determined that they were beach rock. And every geologist, and that's dozens of geologists, have looked at those rocks, and everyone has come to the conclusion it's beach rock because it's so easy to recognize. The uh, question is, are those slabs of beach rock in place? Shin and a three-man diving team used hydraulic drills to bore through the rocks. Eighteen cores were taken. The goal was to determine if the stones had once been part of the coastline. If so, had they fallen into the sea or been carefully placed in position? After drilling down half a foot, the geologist removed the cores and examined them closely. The pattern of the grain indicated that the stones had formed naturally and then at some later date became submerged. This finding led to Shin's own conclusions about the origin of the wall. Well, I think that it's an entirely uh, natural phenomenon, uh, composed of beach rock, as I pointed out earlier, and a combination of a little rise in sea level and the scouring out of the sand underneath has caused the blocks to uh, settle to the bottom. And all of the various shapes can easily be explained by well-known natural phenomenon familiar to, to all geologists. Shin points to a similar phenomenon occurring at the Dry Tortugas National Park south of Key West, Florida. Could the constant attack of the surf have created the lines in the Bimini Wall just as it has created these individual blocks in the Tortugas? Other questions remain unanswered. How could the Bimini Wall have dropped 15 feet when the natural erosion rates indicate that it should be no deeper than three feet below the surface. 
More importantly, how could part of the wall run perpendicular to Bimini's coastline? We are left to ponder the possibility that the Bimini stones were so carefully cut and aligned, they are in harmony with existing natural beach rock. This painstaking placement would require sophisticated mechanical tools. Such tools could only be designed and handled by people of superior intelligence. In the 1930s, psychic Edgar Cayce predicted that part of Atlantis would surface in the late 1960s. In 1968, the Bimini Wall was discovered. Was it possible that the strange stone structure could be part of Atlantis or one of its outposts? Plato was the first to mention Atlantis. While chronicling aspects of the Atlantean people, he claimed that they controlled energy-charged crystals as well as healing wells possessing great curative powers. Healing wells do exist, according to Les Hemingway, author, explorer, and brother of Ernest Hemingway. He had heard of just such a well on Bimini. He and his daughter Hillary agreed to guide us to the site. A narrow inlet, approximately 300 yards long, leads into a mangrove swamp. The brackish water is populated by tiny sharks and rays. Some, like Hemingway, speculate that both plant and animal life thrive extremely well in the area as a result of some peculiar qualities possessed by the well water. Admittedly, Hemingway is not an expert on the well's special properties as a result of direct personal experience. However, he has concluded that the well itself apparently possesses the power to heal. Here is where the actual fountain of youth is. The flow is thousands of gallons per day, and it's absolutely cold, pure, fresh water coming right up in a saltwater pool. The water apparently has definite curative powers because various people who have both major and minor ailments have soaked in it and have experienced an amazing amount of ease from their problems. People who have gout, for instance, have found that the gout disappears in two or three soakings. Other people with small skin cancers and people who have skin inflammations have found that the inflammations and the small growths on their skins have literally disappeared as a result of poultices and soaking with water from this fountain. Surprisingly, Hemingway's claims have received some scientific support. Miami psychologist Adolfo Villasuso tested the well waters and found an unusual amount of a certain element. There were two water samples that I had analyzed in two local laboratories. Uh, one of them I took myself because I was kind of surprised at the uh, high amount of lithium that was found in the well. It was a substantial amount. Laboratory analyses repeatedly revealed that the well water did have an extremely high content of lithium. Researchers within the last 10 years have found that lithium has been particularly useful in producing soothing reactions in both normal and disturbed people. Originally, before it was known that lithium exerted a calming, a therapeutic effect in people with manic depressive illnesses, there are stories in Roman times, in the Middle Ages, that uh, people with this illness were sent to wells which were high in lithium and lo and behold, they were cured. Did an ancient race know of Bimini's lithium well? If so, perhaps Plato's assertion that Atlantis possessed magical waters was correct. The way this well has been cut down through solid rock and the way this well seems to be so well hidden are two very different things. The hiding part, I think, may have developed in the last few hundred years and is a result of just local growth. But the cutting down through solid rock is something that had to be done by intelligent beings who had access to great use of tools and most unusual tools. We don't know whether Atlanteans did this or not. I, of course, would like to think that they did, and it's very possible that they did. It's just that none of us were, have been able to trace back prehistory to Atlantean days in this particular spot. From the air, another peculiar fact about Bimini becomes apparent. 
perfectly straight lines carved in the sand slice across the island. Most point directly to the well. Perhaps the lines, the Bimini Wall, and the well are linked by common ties to the people of Atlantis. Is it possible that further exploration around Bimini might reveal hard evidence of the brilliant but lost Atlantean civilization? The secrets of a bygone civilization are often not easily revealed. The discovery of structures built by the early Egyptians sometimes leave us more puzzled than satisfied. Great debates rage over how an ancient people accomplished such architecturally complicated buildings. And no one explanation satisfies the question, why were the pyramids built? Equally intriguing are similar structures found throughout Central America. Could the construction of these pyramids be linked with those in Egypt? The many stone walls that survive today reveal a high level of workmanship. The complicated stonework produced by both cultures still bemuses modern science. The stones off Bimini bear remarkable resemblance to those in Egypt and Central America. Is it possible that Bimini somehow linked the two together? In 1972, Miami disc jockey Roby Young and well-known psychic Irene Hughes launched the unique experiment here recreated for In Search Of. They hired a plane to fly over the waters surrounding Bimini. The purpose of the flight was to gain psychic impressions of the area to help uncover tangible evidence of the existence of an ancient civilization. We'll just sort of fly around, and if you get a feeling, it will confirm. Now below us, you can see, is just crystal clear water. Uh, the drop off of the Gulf Stream, 3,000 feet down, from then on east, what do you think? Well, I feel that it is all the way along, like a tunnel, you know, but I feel that we have to make this turn, and as we turn, we're going to see, on the right-hand side, we're going to see some blocks. And on the left-hand side, we're going to begin to see gold color in different spots in the water. And I feel it's right over this way, and we're going to have to go that way and curve right back around that way. The plane crisscrossed the skies for more than two hours. Finally, Irene directed the search to an area where she felt something was buried on the ocean floor. It's a building, and I feel that it is pure marble, the most beautiful marble in the world, similar to that, some of that that was used in the building of the pyramids in Egypt. I feel that it is inhabited by the voices and the images of ancient peoples. The spot selected by Irene became the subject of an extensive search. For two years, divers combed the sea looking for evidence of an ancient civilization. They found the usual array of tropical fish and brilliantly colored coral, but nothing else. Finally, at the foot of a steep cliff, a diver spotted a deeply encrusted object on the ocean floor. What he had found was the base of a marble column. After a series of unsuccessful attempts, divers finally brought to the surface a number of marble slabs, each weighing nearly a ton. The slabs had apparently been part of a much larger structure. Whether they were in the process of being transported and went down in a shipwreck, or had been constructed in an area that was later submerged, is unknown. The Bimini-Atlantis connection might have languished had it not been for Raymond Brown, a San Diego physician and adventurer. He believes he has found conclusive links between a Caribbean civilization and those of Egypt and Central America. Dr. Brown's story begins uneventfully on an expedition out of Miami in 1970. Here, recreated, Dr. Brown was headed for an area between Andros Island and the Berry Islands, approximately 100 miles from Bimini. His intention was not to prove or disprove stories about Atlantis, but rather to search for sunken treasure. 
We'd been searching the area for a number of years for Spanish galleons and had found several and taken some of the uh, treasure and we were very excited when we found this area. They traveled to a spot near the tongue of the ocean. There, the bottom drops to 14,000 feet. Dr. Brown hoped that a recent storm might have shifted bottom sand in order to reveal the galleons. The water was very murky and uh, we didn't get to see all that we would like to have seen, but after the storm uh, moved the sand for us that we'd been digging on for several years unsuccessfully, we found ruins and uh, buildings everywhere. Much of Dr. Brown's photographic equipment was destroyed in the storm, thus making it impossible for a detailed record of the find. We really had no choice because if we had gone back for uh, new equipment that we lost during the storm, if we hadn't got in the water even as murky as it was, we, the sand would have covered the buildings up and we would have lost the view. The ruins of the city Dr. Brown claims he found reflected a sophisticated level of architectural design. The buildings had somewhat of an Egyptian or classic look to them. Uh, the ground mass was rippled as though the area had been dropped into the ocean by some sort of cataclysmic action. Then Dr. Brown reported that he came across the most magnificent find of all. In the murkiness, he spotted the tip of a submerged pyramid, barely visible above the ocean floor. Looking at the structure, shape, and the size, it would be approximately 400 feet tall. Uh, I went in an opening, and in this opening, in the center of the room, there was a pedestal. And on the pedestal were two human hands made of brass or bronze. And in the center of the hands was the crystal. My first uh, impression in the, in the room was the uh, shaft that was metallic, hanging straight down from the ceiling, pointing at the crystal. And it was gold color. I swam, because it was still, uh, the room was full of water, I swam up to the ceiling and tried to pry the uh, rod loose. It wouldn't budge, so I settled back down to the floor. And I reached my hand in between the fingers of the uh, metal hands, and I found the crystal was loose. And it was the only thing in the room that I could take home. The crystal bulb seems to possess powers that can repel a coiled stainless steel rod. We found a meter with a one and a half ounce weight, and it become sensitive to emanations, uh, particularly magnetic emanations around people or things if they are charged. We find that if we can hold it straight without uh, allowing it to flip from side to side, some strong influences will actually raise the weight in the air. Now, as we bring something into the field of the crystal, the ions tend to repel if I can keep it balanced and bring it directly into the field and not let it tip from side to side, the weight will then not go to the side if I can keep it centered. And it will, as I come higher, it will raise it and make it weightless and actually float in the air. Some historians say that crystals were the source of Atlantean power. Dr. Brown believes his crystal is evidence that such a culture existed and possessed powers unknown to modern man. Maybe the ancients knew more than we did about uh, life forms and life forces, and we might discover their secret. In the last decade of exploration in the waters off Bimini, new finds cause us to question old theories. Atlantis has long been thought of as a myth a figment of fanciful imagination, a tale told by Plato to amuse ancient Athens. But what of Dr. Brown's crystal? 
Dr. Marcel Vogel, a researcher at IBM, has devoted more than 20 years of investigation to determine the power of crystals and their effect on human potential. Throughout history, the earliest recorded history we have, there's been a deep respect for the shape of a ball and the use of a quartz crystal ball for probing in the mind of an individual. Now, I've worked with Dr. Brown's crystal ball. I used his ball, and I felt a tremendous energy burst coming from the crystal. The discovery of the crystal has spawned speculation that possible misuse of its powers by Atlanteans caused the great cataclysm. The island and all its buildings, it is said, were plunged into the sea. The Bimini Wall, therefore, might be the last visible relic of that lost civilization. In Search Of will continue in a moment here on the History Channel. Divers have always searched for hidden treasures of the sea. In the waters off Bimini may lie the clues that not only unlock the mystery of Atlantis, but the secrets of the mind as well. For the present, however, we must content ourselves with the inconclusive bits of evidence so far uncovered. The origin of the Bimini Wall seems destined to remain an enigma until more knowledge about Atlantis is revealed. Coming up next, In Search Of continues with an exploration of the ancient city of Pompeii, preserved under the ash of Mount Vesuvius. Then it's Crisis in Space as 20th Century with Mike Wallace brings you the real story of Apollo 13. And all this week, it's Hot Damn Week as Modern Marvels brings you the design and construction sagas of some of the world's biggest dams. It continues later tonight with the story of the Hoover Dam at 10 here on the History Channel, where the past comes alive.